Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to My Jewish Learning. So glad you're all uh, here joining us this afternoon. We're um, thrilled to have Yael Weinstein here to lead us through um, a tool that will help us then lead a virtual Seder. Um, so thank you so much for bringing your insights and your creativity to us today, Yael, and um, I'll hand it over to you. Wonderful, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited to introduce this tool. I just wanna let everybody know that this tool is available to you. So everything I'm showing you now, you have, will have access to, and we'll make sure that you have it um, either going to the jfgo.org website, um, and I'll also make sure that Julie has it for my Jewish learning as well. Because the whole point is that what you see today is you're gonna use, bring it into your house and make your Seder a meaningful Seder. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And when I share my screen, you're going to notice um, that you have the ability to, and I'm going to just set you guys up here so I can see everybody properly. Um, so I have a double screen, but you can go ahead and create a side-by-side a, a -side view if you want to. If you want to see me, um, you have the ability to set up side by side by going ahead and choosing the view options up here by moving your cursor and then selecting side by side. We're not gonna go too deeply into what that is, but that's a tool that you have that you're gonna be able to use for your own staters when you host with your participants. So just know that there's something there that you can use. So I wanna introduce you to the tool that you're gonna be able to use for your Seder. It's called Welcome to Our Seder, and it's an interactive virtual Seder for you. And you'll be able to download it as a slideshow and share it on your screen by sharing uh, through Zoom or another platform. You can go ahead and share a PowerPoint, which is really exciting because it makes it really engaging. So to show you this, the first question, of course, is why is the Seder different from all other Seders? Well, on all other Seders, we sit together in our home, learning, sharing, laughing, and connecting with each other. And unfortunately, on this Seder, with the reality of COVID-19, we're really unable to do that. And so how do we come together? How do we experience a Seder virtually in a way that connects us to our family, to our friends, from our own homes, socially distancing, having stay-at-home orders, but really still deeply connected? So hopefully by the time we end this session, you're going to have an idea of how you can make a really meaningful Seder, one that will be a Seder for the books. So we are in a really unique situation in history where other Jewish communities have never had a simultaneous plague with the ability to stay at home and have a virtual Seder. So in some ways, we have to look at it that we're very, very fortunate. And I'm gonna get started on showing you also an issue of the Haggadahs. So as all of you know, we use a Haggadah for our Seders and not everybody has a Haggadah at home. Some people have Haggadahs at home because they lead Seders and some people go to their uncle's house or aunt's house or mother's house and they're the ones who have this Haggadah. So there are a few resources online. There's actually more and more every day because an amazing wealth of ingenuity has come out of this horrible situation where a lot of people have created Haggadot for this year and you can download them free. So some of the Haggadot that exist that you can download for free are on Haggadot.com. I also recommend the Kaveller Haggadah. That's the one that I have here that I printed out. And the wonderful thing is when you get this link uh, or when you download this slideshow, you'll be able to access the link with, um, from Kaveller and you'll be able to access it right here. It is a free Haggadah and you can send it out to your guests beforehand and you can have all of your guests using the same Haggadah that way. However, if you are having different people using different Haggadot, you have the ability to use your chat function in Zoom and everybody can kind of type in what page they're on. So if some people within your Seder, your virtual guests, are using the same Haggadahs, everybody can at least know when you're on Kadesh, you need to be on page 12 if you're in the Kabbalah Haggadah. And when you're on um, Kadesh and another Haggadah, you might need to be on page 15. So you can kind of share with that. So with that being said, let's get started on our Seder. So I'm gonna show you something. I have gone ahead and set up a Seder table. I've done this with a second device. Um, so I have a second camera. You can see me kind of waving at the camera right now. 
and I have everything here. And <clears throat> what is really nice is that you have the ability to do that as well. But if you don't have a Seder table, for example, um, and you want to have your Seder plate, you can go ahead and use this virtual Seder plate tool. And the virtual Seder plate tool has all of <clears throat> the different um, symbolic foods for your Seder plate. So you have the Zroa, the Maror, the Karpas, the Beitza, the Chazeret, which is the second bitter herb, usually a horseradish, and the Choroset. So right now, a lot of us are struggling to find some food. So eggs are really hard to find in the grocery store. Um, I know I, I did a shipped order in Orlando and I got some kosher de Pesach food, but I wasn't able to get, for example, the horseradish root. I was just able to get the chrein in the, the bottles. So you're going to have to be creative in terms of the food. So if you can't get the food, you know, you can make like a, <clears throat> a, a arts and craft version of an egg. You can uh, just use the chrein instead of using the full horseradish. You can maybe use different carpas vegetables. So just use your imagination. And remember, if all else fails, even if you have an empty stator plate, you still have the virtual one that pops up throughout this whole uh, slide deck that you're going to have access to. <clears throat> so now we're at candle lighting. Candle lighting is the way to bring in the holiday. It starts, for example, in uh, Orlando on April 8th at 7.30 p.m., so just check your candle lighting schedule. And you have the ability to bring your candlesticks over, or for example, like I have spotlighted mine, my candlesticks are here, and I could stand up and light the candles, and to bring other people into the Seder, because the last thing you want is to just be the only one talking this whole night, is you have the ability to go ahead and have different people um, say the blessing at their own home. So have their candlesticks ready so that when you all get together to, to sing the blessing, you can. One thing I would like to point out, and a lot of you probably have noticed this by now already, is there is a lag um, when you are doing the um, singing together on Zoom or any other virtual uh, conferencing tool. So just be aware of that lag. So you can choose, yeah, we're going to sing together and just deal with the lag, or you can choose to have one person be the main singer, everybody else on mute, and everybody singing together. And of course, it looks like you're going to all be lip singing with the person who's on, uh, who's the main singer. So it's really up to you how you decide to do it and find the most comfortable thing for you to embrace that, um, just understanding the technology and the limitations of that technology. So now we're at the order of the Seder. So as I mentioned, there is a lag. Um, so singing together is hard. The other thing that's uh, a little hard sometimes for some people is you might be hosting a Seder for the very first time. And when you're hosting a Seder for the very first time, you might not know all the melodies. So what I've done in this tool is I've added an embedded YouTube videos throughout the entire tool that you'll have access to. And you can go ahead and play those uh, YouTube videos and I'm gonna show how that works in just a second. But what's really, really nice about it is if you have somebody like me who can't sing very well at all, you can also drown out that voice and have a beautiful song. So there's lots of reasons why to use these videos. So you'll go ahead and you'll press play. I'm gonna do that in a second, but I'm gonna explain something and you'll see the volume slider come on. So you're gonna to want to adjust your um, computer so <clears throat> that the sound is really uh, not disrupted in your Seder for everybody else. So when you share this document, you're gonna choose more options and choose the, the setting if you're using Zoom, which is share sound from computer, which is what I've done. So it should sound very good. You'll press play. And then you have the ability to adjust the sound louder or quieter. And so I'm going to just show you how it looks so you can get an idea of this. And this is the order of the Seder song. of the video and you can go ahead and play that and that's a, uh, an hour, uh, not an hour, excuse me, a minute and 42 seconds. So you can have a really nice order song for your Seder. So now we're on to the first cup of wine. You're going to go and grab your Kiddush cup. So I have my Kiddush cup right here. You'll fill your glass 
And the biggest warning I can give you is everybody spills sometime during the Seder on their tablecloth. Try and not do that this year because the last thing you want to do is accidentally spill on your laptop or your keyboard. It, they're really expensive materials. So just be cognizant of liquids around your um, materials at this point. So what you can do is you can show everybody that you're on Kaddish. And if you're using, for example, the Kabbalah Haggadah, you can tell them that they're on page 12. Or if you're using another Haggadah, tell everybody what you're at. Now at this point, you might be wondering, well, I want to see my guests as well as seeing the screen. So you can actually set up your computer with an HDMI table onto your television and you have the ability to see everybody while also enjoying this interactive tool. And you can recommend that to your guests too. So I just wanted to point that out before I forgot to do that because that's an important thing. All right, so now we're into Orchatz. And again, I have my or Orchatz station set up over here in my Seder table. And the reason I did it far away from my computer is because I don't want my computer getting wet. However, there's other ideas you can do for our chats as well. For example, you can have the youngest child go run into the kitchen and do our chats so they're up moving and getting around because sitting in front of a computer for an entire Seder might be daunting for your kids. You can recommend that to your guests as well, that each of them choose one representative from, your ta from their table at their home to go to the kitchen and do it as well. So there's different ways to include everybody um, in this Orchatz experience. So now we're on Karpas, and as you notice, here's our virtual Seder plate again. And you can tell where on the virtual Seder plate we are because there's always going to be a white circle circling the, um, the item that we're using. So right now we're doing karpas with the parsley and you'll have salt water. And what's beautiful about this interactive tool is it recognizes that we are living during COVID-19. We're in this really strange experience in this really strange space and it recognizes it and you can choose whether you want to recognize it too in your own conversations or whether you don't want to. But for example, right now, if I was actually hosting the Seder, I would maybe stop sharing my video, open this up to a conversation, and talk to my family and my friends about how the parsley represents a symbol of rebirth and hope, and that the salt water represents the tears of slaves in Egypt and the hardships they've gone through, and that today they can also be a representative of what we're going through and represent our hopes and our tears as we face our own fears and uncertainties relating to COVID-19. And you can create a conversation based off of that that really connects to the adults, but you can also lower it to a level that's appropriate to anybody in your Seder. So if you're talking with your kids, you might use this as an opportunity to say, hey kids, what is it that you're afraid of during this? And it might open up conversations that you haven't yet had. So that's Karpas. Now we're on to Yachatz. For the Yachatz, I have a matzah cover here. I was able to get matzah, but say like you're not able to get matzah and your matzah cover is empty, you can go ahead and use this um, little gif of uh, yachatz, uh, the middle matzah getting cut in, or broken in half. So that's a fun thing. And of course, after yachatz, traditionally you hide afikomans, um, so or in afikomans. So you might want to recommend to each of your guests if they have matzah to go ahead and hide an afikoman within their house. So each house has their own afikoman to search. And if that's not possible, you might want to recommend that they take some cardboard or, um, or uh, a trash, um, like a brown bag, and they can color on it to make it look like an afikoman, and they can hide that. Or use creative ideas. I know there's an amazing amount of ideas also for virtual afikoman searches that are coming out. So use your creativity, use the resources on Facebook, use the resources on myjewishlearning.com. There's tons of uh, ideas out there. So next, you'll have Magid. And Magid is the heart and soul of the Seder experience. And what I would recommend with Magid is to start with Halach Manya, um, which is this beautiful rendition of it. And I'm gonna just play a very small part of it so you can hear how beautiful it is. Oh, 
four questions and with the four questions remember there is a lag so you have a few choices at this point you can put everybody on mute and go ahead and play this video provided which is a Manish Chanab version that has um, like a sing-along karaoke style so it shows where it is and I'll show that in just two seconds to you or you can have the youngest child um, be uh, taken off of mute wherever, whichever house that's in, and have that person start leading everybody and then everybody join in, whether that be off of mute and accepting the lag or everybody else stays on mute and only the family with the computer with the youngest child would sing off of mute. So it's really up to you how you're gonna do it. And I'm gonna just quickly show you the four questions video that I have chosen. Manishtana ha laila haze me call hale. So that gives you an idea of how you can do the Manishtana. So now we're, we are on, we were slaves in Egypt. The traditional Abedim Hayinu is included here for you as a YouTube video. But I've added two activities or two questions that you can offer to your um, participants. And this is a place that maybe you wanna go ahead and stop the slide share, the screen share, and ask these questions and have a really amazing conversation. But two of the questions that I've put, it up, put up, and you can think of other questions to put up as well, are with social distancing and staying at home, what are parts of your life that you felt you were a slave to prior to COVID-19? And then another question is, with social distancing and staying at home, how do you now think of freedom? And what do you miss about your prior freedoms prior to COVID-19? Okay. And now we're on to the four sons. And there's a lot of fun activities you can do with the four sons. You can give out roles before your Seder and tell like your aunt that she's the wise son and your uncle, he's the wicked son. And they have to come with ideas that are awesome. You can use the different Haggadot that you're using to read what each of them say about the wise son. But what's nice about this um, tool is that you can highlight when you're on the wise, when you're on the wicked, when you're on the simple, and when you're on the who doesn't know how to ask at all. So now we're at Vihisha Amda, and you go ahead and raise your glass. Again, be careful that you're not accidentally spilling it on your computer. And I'm going to play you this beautiful rendition of Vihisha Amda. It is five minutes. I'm not playing the whole thing. I just want you to hear how beautiful it is um, because it's my favorite um, video that I've included in this tool. So now we're on the Exodus story. There's lots of things that you can do with the Exodus story. You can recite the story as told in your Haggadah, whatever Haggadah it is. You can recite the story by memory. You can ask children and other family members uh, at your Seder questions. You can set up polls if you're using Zoom and ask questions that people respond to. You can prepare a skit. Really, the sky's the limit. Use resources from myjewishlearning.com. Use resources from other places on Facebook and really find things that are engaging and make your Seder memorable. In addition, I've included um, ideas and activities throughout the thing that you can use. So one of these activities is to create finger puppets of the plagues. So for example, you can download these Tori Avery home puppets. You can also set up different things on your own table that you can buy on Amazon, um, or you can create your own cards or construction paper of plagues. You can set up a, a little station if you're comfortable having arts and crafts done during the Seder, but the kids are making these during the Seder. There's all different activities that you can do. 
So now we're on to Dianu. And uh, Dianu is a lot of fun and you can have everybody get dressed up. So there are like the different clothing that you can see in this picture of the Maccabees version of Dianu. You have the opportunity to have um, people, um, if you can get green onions, which I know is hard, you can do the traditional uh, singing of Dianu with hitting with the green onions, which I know is a family minhag or tradition of mine. Try and bring in your traditions as much as you possibly can in this virtual Seder, because it will make it feel more comfortable, more relatable to you, more relatable to your guests. And I'm not going to play this version of Dianu for you just because I want to be cognizant of the time. But when you do download this toolkit, I highly recommend listening to it because it is fantastic. So now we're on every generation. How do you see yourself in every generation? Do you see yourself differently now because of you being a generation dealing with a plague like those during the Black Death or even Rabbi Akiva's students during the time of Lagva Omer uh, being created and commemorated? So what is this that you see yourself? This uh, picture comes from a beautiful Haggadah called the Mas Haggadah, where there are literally um, mirrors between pictures of people in every generation. This might be a time where you stop the screen share and have a beautiful conversation with your guests uh, in gallery view. Now we're on to the second glass and again raise your hands and or raise your glass and you'll see that it's circled. And after the second glass we're on to Rachsa, being cognizant as always to be careful with your computer screen. You can have everybody stand up from all different um, from every single room, go into the kitchens if that's where your washing station is. If you brought it into the Seder table, go ahead and do that. Whatever is comfortable and say the al you die in prayer. We're on Motsi. I've provided a matzah picture here just in case you couldn't find matzah. And the blessings pop up for you to say. And for Maror, you'll see that we have our virtual Seder plate with the maror circled. And you can go ahead and say that blessing. And now we're on korech, and you'll see you'll need matzah, the chazeret, and the charoset. So everything is circled there too. And now you're on shulchan arech. And at this point, you have a few options. So remember, if you're using Zoom and you're using a free version, it's only 40 minutes. So right now you might wanna stop everybody eat in their own respective homes and then join back on. Some of you might say this is the end, you're done with Shulchan Arech, uh, at, at the end of Shulchan Arech because that's how some people traditionally do it. Or you might do something really cool like using breakout rooms uh, to do a kid's table versus doing an adult's table. Or if you have a lot of people, you can do random breakout rooms so people can talk or you can take everybody off of mute. This is also the perfect time to search for the Afikomen. And once the Afikomen is found, you can play this very fun song that I love that I've included. My dad at every Seder breaks a matzah piece in two and hides the Afikomen half a game for me and you. Find it, hold it, ransom for the Seder isn't through till the Afikomen with that. So now we're at Barach, and traditionally the Berkat HaMazon is recited during this part. The Kaveler Haggadah doesn't have the whole one, so if you do use the Kaveler Haggadah, know you're going to need a Sidor, a Bencher, or you can go ahead and click here to, down, uh, to access the online Sidor version, um, and therefore you'll be able to listen to, or not listen, but to do the Berkat Hamazon. And again, be aware that if you all go off and mute for Berkat and you have the lag, that's fine. Just be aware that that's going to happen. So now we're on to the third cup. And then of course, as soon as the third cup is done, you have Elijah's cup. There's a lot of fun things you can do with this. Um, you can have one house be responsible for opening the door and take your second device or their device and open the door. And then you can have another house being responsible for Elijah's cup. And then one of those parents drink the cup. And then when all the kids are looking again, you can be like, oh my God, Elijah came and drank the cup. So there's all different fun things that you can do to engage the kids and make it more fun. Everybody can go and open the door for Elijah's cup. It's really up to you how you feel it would be wonderful to commemorate this particular aspect and this part of the Seder. So now we're on to Hallel, and a lot of people don't actually do um, Hallel at the end. If they've finished the Seder at Shulchan Arach, they don't get to it. 
And some people do it and they don't know what it is. And so this is a fantastic video by Rabbi Josh Bagelson about what Hallel is. And then after watching it, you can have this amazing conversation of what things are you grateful for this year? What are you grateful for during this time of pandemic? That might be a hard question to ask and it might really help people think of things um, from a positive perspective. I'm gonna show just a very little small version of this video like just a small uh, clip. When's the, last time When's the last time you were so happy you sang a song with someone else? You might have done it today or yesterday, but on the whole, it feels like we have fewer and fewer opportunities for group singing, which is a bummer because group singing is awesome, like literally awesome. It can help us experience awe and gratitude, things we need more of in our lives. Hallel is the Jewish people's musical number to celebrate Wonderful. profound. So that's a great video and I highly recommend it. So and then we're on the fourth cup. And then of course, once you're done with the fourth cup, we're at Nirza. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and added a view of the Kotel Live. So when you click on this picture, it pops up um, a video of the Kotel Live and I'm gonna show that to you right now. And you can do a new share screen and you can take everybody to the Kotel for Lashana Haba'ab Yerushalayim, which is a really cool way of ending your Seder. And of course, once you finish that, um, you have the ability to go back to your screen and you can finish with the songs to conclude your Seder for Chad Gadya or Who Knows One, and there are fantastic versions of those. I'm not gonna play them right now. And then at the end of your toolkit, you have a checklist of all the things you're going to need. So you can go to this toolkit, um, this tool beforehand, go make sure you have everything. If you don't have it, you have some virtual versions. You can also find out what symbolic foods are necessary. Um, and if you don't have them this year, if you can't find eggs, it's okay. Just discuss what the eggs mean and what they symbolize. And then here are additional resources for you on symbolic foods, on items for Passover, on parody songs, because a lot of people like parody songs. You have the ability to create a playlist on Spotify and you can actually share that through your computer for all your guests to enjoy. And then last but not least, so here is the bibliography because I think it's important to recognize all the amazing people who created all of these um, videos and songs that I've used here within the Haggadah tool. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing and we can go ahead and take questions. Okay, so um, you may have noticed there is not a, a chat box um, for security reasons. So if you have a question, if you could use the raise hand feature and then you can unmute yourself and ask um, your question. I'll also um, tell you at the end of the session where you can find um, this amazing um, PowerPoint um, on the My Jewish Learning website. Um, and also, Yael, if you have a way um, at the end that you could show us the link so that people can um, drag it directly, that would be fantastic. So um, thank you so much. And um, we can take some questions if there are any questions at this point for Yael. And if you can't find the raise a button, you can go ahead into participants by moving your cursor if you're on a computer. And when it pops up, you have a raise a button option there, just so you know where they are. You could also try waving your hand and um, hopefully I'll see you. Okay, I see uh, Linda. Linda, you can unmute yourself. I'll unmute you, there you go. Thank you very much. Uh, later on today, I intend to be taking a tutorial about how to physically uh, combine different homes using the Zoom. Uh, I'm not that, uh, in, you know, technologically uh, knowledgeable. So that's a major concern of mine of how to keep everybody connected on the computer. I know yeah, that may so not be the purpose of this uh you know, a tutorial that you're giving, it's, which is quite lovely, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. So I actually, um, I've created a manual on how to use Zoom for this, and I can go ahead and um, give it to Julie, and Julie can maybe use that also. Um, but basically, 
the only person who needs to be able to share a screen is the host. So just be aware of that. And then um, everybody else can have a free account or just log in by clicking the link. The only person who really truly needs to be logged into Zoom is the host. So, and then the host can see, can purchase the $14.99 version for a month. And that $14.99 version will let you have more than 40 minutes on your Zoom account. And only the host needs to have that paid version. Everybody else can have the free version. But my manual actually goes through exactly how you set up a meeting, um, how you set up different components of it. So if you're interested in that, I'll go ahead and get that to Julie after this as well. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Um, Barbara. Thank you. Very, oh, I guess I have to unmute. No, I'm unmuted. Um, I looked on my Jewish learning and I couldn't see where you could download this welcome. Is it called Welcome to Our Seder? Is that it what is. it is? And is, is there a charge for that? It is not. It is completely free. I created it um, on behalf of the Jewish Federation of Greater Orlando. And it is meant for the Jewish community to use. And please share it please use it. It's here for all of us because is it there we now? Have enough time. What? Is it there now? Because I looked. Barbara, it, it will be there very soon. Um, Thank you. In, in the, um, right after this, um, this session. And I'm going to share my screen and show everyone where on the webpage it will be um, available. Thank so you very much. Bear with me for one second. Does anybody have another question while we're waiting for the share screen? Is this going to be available after Pesach also for future yes. years? You'll be able to download it after Pesach and you can save it to your computer. So as soon as you download it, you can save uh, the slideshow to your computer or you can go ahead and favor it on your um, like on your web address area. So Thank if you, you use Chrome or if you use Edge, you can go and bookmark it as well. Thank you. I'll mute yeah. myself again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have a question um, yeah. while we're waiting. Uh, the, the questions you posted were very thought provoking, but I wonder if you have any suggested questions that are a little more kid friendly. Yeah, so I think for the kid friendly ones, uh, it, you can bring it back down to them, right? Like maybe what is the one thing that you missed terribly? about being on quarantine, right? And they might say my soccer games or ballet dance, you know, class or seeing my friends. And then you can say to them, what is one way that you can connect to the people in your network? Not, don't say network, but like connect to your friends or connect to your soccer team um, or connect to your ballet class friends and really bring it to a place where they feel connected to it. The other option is if they're really young at the table, I would say don't ask those questions at all. And then if you do a kid's breakout room, you can bring those questions back up when you for the adults and just the adults. So there's ways to do that. Does that answer your question, Becky? Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Okay. My pleasure. Um, so everyone, I'm, I'm just gonna share my screen. Um, so you should all see the My Jewish Learning homepage. Um, has kind of a depressing lead story today, so I apologize. But um, if you go to the homepage, uh, we have a permanent spot on the homepage here for um, daily guide to Zoom events and live streams and other online resources. And um, this is where we listed today's event. And this is where we will post right after the session um, the links to the two things Yael mentioned, both the, the full guide to how to host a virtual Seder as well as the guide to using Zoom. So you can see this is listed right here. Um, and so that is where we will, if you click on that link from the homepage, you should see, you know, within a few minutes after the session, the links will, will be right here. Um, Th thank you apologies very much. For, sure. Um, at, while I'm here, I just also wanted to mention, if you go to this page, we're sending out now a daily email with um, information about other events like this that you can join and you can click here to sign up for that as well. Thank you. Okay, and I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, any other questions? I have one. One more. Yes, um, Linda. 
Okay. It's really Alan, not Linda. Hi, Alan. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to try to change anything. If you have the professional level of Zoom, can you make subgroups that go like almost like tables to go away for a while during a meal? And then you can you can. pull them back? Do the, yep. did the other people need the professional? They do not. You will go into Zo your Zoom account at zoom.us. You'll enable breakouts. And once you have enabled breakouts, you can put anybody in breakout rooms. Uh, like a button will come up at the bottom of your menu. When you move it, you'll see manage, you know, you'll see manage, you'll see polls, you'll see et cetera, et cetera. And you'll see breakout rooms and you can go ahead and create your breakout rooms. And how to do that is included in my manual of how to run a Seder on Zoom that I'll be, uh, that will be on the myjewishlearning.com page. One little question. Can you preset the breakout groups before the meeting? So yes and no. Um, so the yes, that's such a Jewish answer, right? Um, so yes, sure. because I know it's very impressive. So yes, if people register beforehand, you can divide them up beforehand. So if you have all your friends create a Zoom account and accept a, a and, and accept your link via Zoom, you can go ahead and divide them up. That's a bit complicated, to be honest, I think, for a lot of people. So the easier way would be to do it when they're already in. You would create the breakout room when they're already in. And that way, people don't have to register. Because, like, Thank your, you. I don't know, your uncle might not want to register or it might be too difficult to register, right? It might be hard enough alone just to click on a link. I don't know. They're How do you know my people. uncle? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Um, from B. Colm. B. Colm. <laughs> I, I have a long name. Can you hear me? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, so thank you for doing this. This is really awesome. I'd already sent out Haggadahs to all my families. <laughs> um, so one of the, I was thinking, I, I don't think it's wrong to do it. We were going to um, put the meal at the end so that people who wanted to stay on, because we're in all different time zones, uh -huh. could stay on. And I was just going to encourage people to have nibbles, which isn't usually done, but, you know, to have some nibbles ready just in case. I think oh. there's the halachic view, and then I think there's the realistic view. And I'm not a rabbi, and I'm not a gadolim, so I can't give the halachic answer. Um, I can give the realistic answer, which is, if that's what's going to be working for your seder, do that. But I'm that's not a rabbi, so I did not say that, um, even though it's <laughs> recorded right now. <laughs> no, I want the um, realistic view. That's yeah, fine. and so um, what I would say is you shouldn't, you should do the afikoman at the very end, and you should do um, barach or the birkat hamazon at the very end. Oh, that's a good um, idea. Yeah, so that would be my non halachic kind of thought process to it. But again, I'm not okay. a rabbi, so. No, I think that fits um, in what I was thinking. I was gonna like perfect. the whole that whole part portion to do yeah. at the end with either your own family or if you wanted to, if people wanted to stay on and you know to do that. So. Perfect. That sounds great. I oh, saw. Oh, this go ahead. Sorry. I was just saying, thank you so much. This is so awesome. My pleasure. Absolutely. I saw Lisa Todra. I don't think I'm saying your name. Todra, so it's okay. No one gets it right. Okay. <laughs> um, can you talk more about, you mentioned briefly that we could hook up a second screen with our TV. Yeah. Talk about how that would work. Yeah. So I'm going to show you really quickly. I'm going to bring my, oh, um, so, well, there, I'm going to turn, hold on two seconds. Um, let me get my Seder table because then I can show you what I do. You're going to see behind the scenes. Please don't judge my, my office. Okay. So do you guys all see that? It's not showing. Is it? It's not showing. Hold on two seconds. Yeah, we see it. Okay. So now you can see it. So this is an HDMI cable right here and it is hooked up to my second screen right here. So that is how you can have two dual monitors and you can do the same thing with a, with a TV. So that is a way that you can have two um, dual monitors or you can literally have a second, well, I have like a second screen, right? Because I have my, my second screen here as my Seder table. Um, but you can do both. One of the things I would suggest to you if you're using 
two devices, not just two monitors, but two devices. If you sign up, if you log in with that second device like I am right now, you have to leave the audio off. Don't join with audio because if you do join with audio, the speaker, even if you have it on mute where the mic isn't picking up, the speaker is working. So it will create this horrible cacophony of feedback loop and you really don't wanna do that. That's, that's not fun for anybody. Um, does that answer your question of how to do it though? Yeah, and that's just to so if we wanted to have sort of what you have, your table set up, we could just show that always and then kind of take turns who's on the main screen. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. And you can do spotlight. That's in my manual of how to use spotlight a camera. Um, it's actually very easy under my participants. You hover over more and you choose spotlight. And then when you don't want to spotlight it, you hit cancel. You can also pin a video. I like spot like not having it always on. So I chose spotlight over pin, but you can do both. So you have that ability. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Barbara, Barbara, you had another question? Simple one. If you don't have a TV screen hookup, does everybody have to have a device like an iPad or a computer, even the children, in order to be um, involved with the Seder? No, so you have the ability to all be together. So say like there's four of you and your family at home, you have the ability to as decide how close or far away you want your camera. So the closer I bring my camera to me, you see the less you see of me. The farther it goes, the more you see. I can also physically move back and you can see more people, right? So you have the ability as I sh like shuffle back again, you have the really ability to adjust your camera to where it needs to go so people can see Is that on Zoom? individuals as possible. On Zoom, mm -hmm, with your webcam, yep. Okay, but do most people have a device for each child? I would not recommend setting up in the same household multiple devices unless you're the host or unless you're doing a like kids table during your breakout. And okay. if you are using more de multiple devices that have the audio on, you need to be in completely separate rooms or you're going to create a really bad feedback and that's going to be really painful for everybody. Thank you very much. My this pleasure. Has been awesome. Thank you. Uh-huh. I'm muting um, again. Thank you. Any final questions for Yael before we wrap up here? Anything else? Uh, mine's not a question, but I just wanted to say that I've been using Zoom quite a bit for a long time. And if you find that people are getting choppy, you use a lot of bandwidth with your videos. So at some points, you may need to turn your video off just so everybody can hear each other. Yes, absolutely. And that will depend on your bandwidth of your internet your capabilities of your computer, the capabilities of everybody else's devices. So there's a lot of things that go into what will make a video choppy. Um, oh, Stacy. Um. Yeah, my question is, I'm, oh, I'm muted now. Okay, all right. Uh, so that the Kveller Haggadah, that link is in, the link to that is in the PowerPoint that's correct. The Cabeller Hogata link is in the PowerPoint. It's in two locations. It's in the bibliography as well as in that the Hogata slide. Right. And you can go ahead and download it. You can send that link out to all of your guests beforehand. Everybody can download it. Um, if they don't have a printer, that is a time where they could use a second device for the Hogata, right? Have your right. iPad open to the Hogata and have your, um, your webcam device or your computer to the people and faces. Okay, I'll just I'll just add in here um, since Kveller is you know a partner of my Jewish learning that um, it's a very simple URL kveller.com slash Haggadah so um, easy to remember um, and also the Kveller Haggadah is available on Amazon so everybody who's participating in your Seder could actually buy it and um, it would get shipped in time for for next week. Correct. Great. Um, yeah, Elle, is there a way that you can show uh, right now the URL for your PowerPoint. Um, so if you go, so if you, go, I, I can, uh, I can't type so because there's no chat, but I can go ahead and uh, share my screen. Actually, Great. the easiest way is probably telling you because we have a, a screen that changes, uh, like it changes the URL. It's jfgo.org slash streaming. Actually, I have it on, hold on two seconds. 
going to open something else up that can get it for all of you. And this is the manual I was talking about that I have um, created on how to use the Seder, but it's right here, jfgo.org slash streaming. Fantastic. And that's my email address, yweinstein at jfgo.org. So you're more than welcome to ask me any questions and send me any information that you have. Is that okay? I hope that's okay, Becky, that I said that. <laughs> yes, please, yes, please feel free to reach out to you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So thank you again, Yael, so much for um, sharing this with us today. And I'll remind everyone that you can also still find, you will be able to soon find that link on the My Jewish Learning homepage under the listing for upcoming uh, online events. Um, and you can check back for other um, online events. There are going to be more and more learning opportunities. And if you'd like to get reminders, you can sign up there or send an email to community at myjewishlearning.com. So I wish everyone um, a good Passover and, um, and for, uh, to, to stay healthy and well. So thank you all very much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very thank much. You. This was great. Good. Thank Goodbye. you.